Okay, thank you all for joining us and, and welcome to uh, what is our first uh, pop-up ecosystem here. Uh, we've decided very swiftly to organize a series of pop-up ecosystems. Um, for those people who've been to our ecosystem before, you'll know the, the, the format of many of our ecosystems, but this one's specifically um, a rapid response to the COVID-19 crisis. Our ecosystems are, are uh, bring together a community of stakeholders together. Um, specifically, we're looking now at this being more, more than relevant um, targeting COVID-19. Our ecosystems break down silos and transform healthcare delivery. Um, but for now, um, this must be online. Our next slide, please. Gregor, that's it, thank you. And, and next slide again. With them not being based now on a geographical area, we must also maintain this idea that our pop-up ecosystems will be free. Um, and we're gonna be running these on a weekly basis, um, same time, same day, each week. Uh, we intend them to be both short and sharp and relevant and initially targeting COVID-19. Going backwards though, we also want to maintain the fact that our ecosystem is leading with a need and will feature our international network of ecosystems. Next slide, please. And, and you can see in front of you, we've got a very large, for those people who haven't seen this for a while, a very large and growing network of ecosystems, um, which is growing still consistently. Next slide, please. What we're wanting to do is, is feature both our ecosystem's needs and best practices. And that's important in that order because many of our ecosystems are uh, unsurprisingly right in the front line of this crisis and have um, specific requests for support, solutions, and sometimes basic equipment, but also have some really, really good examples of best practice and solutions that have been um, delivered and, and, and developed within the region. We want to open this space for our ecosystems to go virtual uh, and also provide a program with ecosystems presenting on a rotating basis to make sure that we hear from all of our current ecosystem, but also our up and coming ecosystems as well. We intend that these will be both recorded and shareable because obviously we're also aware that many of the stakeholders in all of our ecosystems are busy during the day on the front line working and targeting COVID-19. And we will, we'll, although with this, we, we started this this week, we will be contacting our ecosystem coordinators and colleagues to prepare a schedule of these events in the, in the coming days and weeks. Next slide, please. We see this as trying to increase access uh, to best practice targeting COVID-19. We want to be able to show that we can collaborate across both regions and countries, as we've, as we've seen already. We also believe this is a really good and positive way to scale up innovation and bring up best practice from your country to others. And we want these both to be both short, agile, lean and rapid in focus. Next slide, please. We also, and this is just um, for those people who are unaware, we're as a member organization targeting our members um, for collaboration opportunities. Many of our members have in the last couple of weeks stepped up to the plate in terms of offering both solutions, but also reaching out as healthcare organizations with requests for support and need. We would encourage you to continue with this and help share those needs and support uh, with your members in your ecosystems as well. We'd like you to share the best practice we're, we're showing, also the funding opportunities that have been rapid and building as well. If you have any specific needs on this or any specific support requests or best practice to share with our members, please contact me by emailing me using the email address there and I'll be in direct con contact with you following that. That remains it from me in terms of introduction. I would like to press on and welcome in our first uh, 
presentation from Joseph, uh, based in Spain, in Catalonia, who's going to talk about their artificial intelligence based online test. Over to you, Joseph. Joseph. Hello, everyone. Um, and uh, first of all, thank you for uh, the invitation to uh, share this time with you guys and, and uh, everyone for, for attending. Um, this valuable time to share what we are doing and uh well i'm gonna be the first one in this session which is at the same time the first one of all the sessions so um i, I want to make sure that we use this time uh, to the best convenience of, of of all the audience right so i'll try to use as less time as possible uh being very clear and and straight to the point and allow as many time as possible for uh, discussions questions or uh suggestions <clears throat> Well, first of all, uh, as a, in terms of uh, who I am, uh, my role is uh, I'm the Director of Global Business Development. Uh, uh, maybe some of you are familiar already with what Medictor is, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, what we are is um, the most advanced uh, AI-based technology for triage, pre-diagnose, and decision-making support. So that means that uh, we assess uh, individual symptoms uh, using our artificial intelligence engine and uh, at the end of the process we advise them on a number of things like for instance which might be the conditions causing that uh, those symptoms and uh, also giving a recommendation on what to do where to go basically how to access healthcare in a way that it's safe convenient uh, and efficient we, we typically offer our technology to uh, uh, payers and uh, nowadays Medicare is being used by uh, almost 10 payers in in the market in, in Europe uh, also to uh, providers telemedicine platforms etc uh, ours is a wide label technology that we embed in, in the in the uh, front ends uh, that our clients may have to interact with their members it can be a, an app or a website or um, a virtual assistant or, or, a, or a bot any any interface is is available so that's basically what what we do uh, something that makes our technology different is um, the level of accuracy and even more importantly um, the uh, fact that it's the only technology of this kind that it's clinically validated with clinical trials published in scientific magazines etc so uh, with with that um, uh, our efforts in the last weeks has been to how to use our technology and the power of uh, the artificial intelligence engine that we have developed over the last eight years uh, to uh, to support in this effort against COVID-19. And, and, uh, and, and our response to that has been to develop a, uh, an express version of Medictor, uh, which is specifically designed uh, to identify the risk that an individual might be infected by COVID-19, right? Uh, that means that we use all our uh, artificial in, uh, intelligence power to identify conditions, but uh, the difference in this solution is that uh, we are uh, starting the process, we're starting the conversation with the user, not allowing the user to express all the symptoms they have in an open text field like we usually do, but asking about a specific uh, symptoms related to COVID-19, right? So um, as, as in a traditional medical assessment that leads to a conclusion on if you might be having COVID or not, and what is the best recommendation that of course we customize for different clients, different places and regions in the world, uh, but with something that it's different to uh, other solutions that you're seeing out there, which is uh, normally what some uh, governments are opting for are uh, checklists that basically just help you discriminate if you might be having COVID or not, which is valuable, but we're trying to go beyond and not only identify if you might be having COVID or not, but also in case you are not, you might not be affected by the, by the condition, which other conditions might be causing the, uh, this, these symptoms that you're experiencing, right? Uh, with, with our technology, after using that for the last <clears throat> two weeks, what we are seeing is uh, that around 80% of the individuals uh, do not present symptoms of the potential COVID. That is helping our clients in two ways. One, if, if they are call centers, we are helping them to uh, avoid unnecessary phone calls that, that are putting a lot of pressure in these uh, call centers. And the uh, second 
value that this is generating is that we are also advising people what to do, basically not to go to any healthcare facility. So this is also relieving the uh, pressure that some uh, facilities are experiencing uh, more and more as, as the condition spreads, right? Um, so uh, this is what we are uh, offering uh, to the market nowadays. Of course, the value of Mediture is where it's embedded into more holistic solutions. So solutions that also offer, for instance, um, remote consultations in case that those are needed, uh, remote monitoring of uh, vital signs. For instance, we're now partnering with a, with a company in the US to offer uh, these features too. Um, uh, remote follow-up regularly and even suggesting or offering the option to assess your symptoms regularly to make sure that your symptoms are not evolving from an existing or mild to uh, more complicated symptoms. So this is what we are uh, working in with different governments, uh, to different governments in uh, in Europe and in in Latin America. Um, so that's that's in a nutshell what what we are doing, how we are doing this. Uh, again, please uh, tell me if you want to get into more details or if you want to start uh, or give the opportunity to others to to share their their uh, projects, and then we can start a discussion. So. Uh, any advice is welcome at this point. Any input from colleagues? Okay, thank you for that, so Yusuf. Very, very helpful. Um, I want to move now, uh, if we can, from the input from Spain uh, to Slovenia. Or we've got Yerni, Yerni uh, Pintar from the Technology Park in Ljubljana. Um, Yerni, if you could um, start your presentation, please. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, it's going to be a speaking presentation. Oh. Um, I'll talk about uh, the prototype, the prototyping of. Uh, respirator of a ventilator um just a little bit of an intro into that uh, technology park ljubljana as you all know slovenia is very small and technology park ljubljana is a small place where we have gathered high tech companies a lot of them with high uh, technology capabilities um so we have stuff from lasers uh, medical gene almost everything um when the when this whole crisis started we engaged in several different activities um, one of them is the re respirator that i'll talk a bit about a bit later um, but the first one that we did was the advice to companies that are included in our community and actually all across slovenia which included not that much of uh, of uh, health regulations because those were given by the government but how to react how to hold your company together, how to lead it, what are the best practices, what happens when you have 15% of turbo panickers in the company and they have the biggest megaphone on their phone and they are paralyzing everything. So advise how to keep your companies going, right? So that was our first action. Uh, then the second one was to start prototyping masks um, and then some visors, you know, the, the transparent uh, things and the respirators. The last three, were all done via a community. So they were not done by Technology Park Ljubljana ourselves. In each of the case, this was a community action, which basically meant that for each of these purposes, we have created a very flexible structure of partners um, and then closed the borders so that not too much uh, would go on, for example, from the media or from everybody else trying to get on board, but they would stop the train. So uh, each initiative was uh, very focused and going forward. Um, currently, are producing visors for our healthcare workers. We already have masks because Slovenia is also uh, lacking masks in a massive amount. Plus, the government is rejecting the ones that are being important, uh, imported. Um, so we are prototyping our own and putting the certified filters into them. Now to the respirator. So the respirator was, I think, um, 
the most crucial element that uh, the whole media in Slovenia is talking about. Um, currently, we have only about 160 of them. We are importing a bit more. Um, and what's going on is that suddenly there was a flood of everybody trying to innovate. So as you have seen on all types of social media and classical media, every day you would see 100 extra ventilators coming up, but most of them would only pump the air. So you would see all these machines that would pump the air via squeezing a sort of a ballon, or you would have a small propeller ventilating the air through some filter into the patient. Well, in our case, we got uh, a bit different directions from, the, from, the, from our main medical center. And they said that if a prototype is to be used, since it's not certified and tested, um, usually at least two, three years, they said that it needs to be the kind of a prototype that <clears throat> it mixes, of course, the oxygen and the regular air in the dosages of 20, 60, 80, or 100 percent. Perhaps it can also put a bit of moisture on the end of it if it's about 100 percent of oxygen, of course. Um, and it needs to adjust the capacity to the sick lungs. And only this kind of a ventilator would be valid for usage because when a doctor has a, a dying patient on their hands and they do not have a certified uh, ventilator available, the option must be between leaving that person to fight for themselves or giving them this kind of a, 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 of a ventilator, right? So um, what that meant for us was that in the beginning when we have established the group and then we have established the contra group of uh, doctors, so the engineers and the doctors would work together, exchange all the possible directions. Uh, first, we were doing just a normal ventilator, not the, not the the almost dying patient one, right? Um, and so after about, I think it was five days or something like that, the doctor suddenly realized that, no, we need this uh, borderline ventilator that needs to be available. So we completely changed the direction. Um, all along the way, we had, of course, a lot of companies saying that this is not something that should be done because medical equipment is medical equipment. And of course, that is a, an absolutely valid argument. But then we got persuaded by the doctors themselves that said, no, we need any type of equipment to, to, to overcome um, the dying, uh, the coronavirus. And so we went on with it. Um, at that time, we also encountered another problem, which was that Slovenia is small, basically meaning that not all the components can be achieved and made in Slovenia. So, for example, we have a lot of particles for this uh, prototype respirator that we have now that uh, we have three different groups. Yeah, I forgot to tell that. We have three different groups. Not all of them are ours. So one of them was initiated by Technology Park. Two were initiated by other organizations, right? But in a certain moment, it got clear that nobody is coordinating these two group, these three groups to work together. So me being from Technology Park, I exited our group and started coordinating between these two so they would visit each other. So now we have uh, 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 lead engineers going from one prototype to another group, exchanging ideas how to go forward fast, faster. So that was a really nice effect. Um, companies have been trying to get on board we have i think about now 200 companies that are trying to get on board but we are very limiting uh, it's almost impossible to get on board now because we're so far into development the prototype is already work, working it's already be, it's it's already standing um so we had to really keep the lines the border lines closed um despite whoever was calling it i mean the calls were from the top of the government from, from all around but we just kept a tight capsule that would go forward um so the the biggest problem that we have now that's where i left off earlier is the components we have about two or three components that are not produced in slovenia they can be uh, purchased from china but that means that when they land in ljubljana they need to go into a quarantine for at least seven days and only then we can build them into a prototype so what we're doing now is we're prototyping these new components so that we could produce them in Slovenia. And um, so far, it seems it will be possible. 
Um, so in short, Gregor, I think this this is uh, what I was planning to say. Thank you for giving me a chance to present these uh, initiatives that we have, and thank you for the exchange of ideas. Thank you very much for that, Yearning. Very interesting to see different responses, specifically uh, around the respirator idea. We've seen, obviously, various national um, approaches to this and also a European-wide approach as well. So it's very, very interesting to see different approaches and, and with a different target too. Next up, we're going to uh, move from Slovenia. And I think what we'll do, we would we'll perhaps come back for some questions and, 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 and inputs from other participants towards the end of this, but we're going to move from Slovenia uh, now to Scotland. And I'd like to uh, introduce my colleague, Margaret Wariski from the DHI in Scotland who very kindly is, is, is offered to speak to us today on um, specifically about how to scale up telemedicine um, because this is, is, is obviously a very uh, crucial time for uh, practitioners to use and increase the use of telemedicine uh, in digital health and social care. So Margaret, uh, the floor is, is yours, please. Okay, uh, thanks Andy. Just checking, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm Margaret Foriski. I'm actually not with DHI, even though I work closely with the Digital Health and Care Institute. I'm with Scottish Government, and I've been responsible for the last um, sort of five years for our national tele uh, technology enabled care program, which has been focused on how we create the conditions for supporting scale up within local health and care services. So I'm just going to give you an example of a program that has been underway and the response we have taken with regards to uh, COVID-19. So next slide, please. Um, so the program I'm talking about is Near Me, which is a telehealth um, program enabling patients to access appointments across primary and secondary care and potentially beyond that um, by video. So. The conditions to support scale up, I suppose, are facilitated by good policy. So we've had a strategy really around technology enabled care since 2015. Uh, we have had our first digital, sorry, back to the previous slide. I think the slide has jumped on. Yeah, no, back, yeah. Uh, we've had our digital health and care strategy, which was published uh, in 2018. Uh, we, we've got other, other strategies and reference within our Scottish budget around the importance of remote access and monitoring. Um, from a programme perspective, since 2017, uh, we built in the video consulting to our tech programme. Um, we funded some early adopters in Scotland. Uh, we did a national procurement so that we made it easy for people to engage with this. And in 2019, we provided funding to all our area health boards, which are our delivery partners for health across Scotland. Importantly, we invested in improvement support and change management. So we recognized at the outset, this wasn't just about technology. This was about the, the service design and the process changes that were required. And we also invested in evaluation and drawing out the evidence. Um, next slide, please. So business as usual, under normal circumstances, I think we were seeing based on experience in Highland that we saw a three year timeline really from tests of change moving into a development phase and then preparing for scale up and then at scale and this wasn't at scale across all services but it was at scale across some specialties um, a month is a long time so in february this year i presented a paper to our board um, looking at a plan for how we would further scale up our near me program at that time, we were saying we had on average about a thousand, just over a thousand consultations a month. So we were seeing progress, but very incremental, and uh, we wanted to get uh, further, further focus. So we were aiming by March next year to have about 3,000 consultations a month. So again, we were being cautiously ambitious. We recognise um, this is still just a small percentage of overall consultations taking place. But we wanted to do a particular programme with primary care and further develop our focus on secondary care. Okay, next slide. 
within a week probably of having agreed that plan, obviously the realization of COVID became more to the fore and there was increasing uh, interest in how our Near Me programme could support um, the pressures on health services during the coming weeks and months. So first of all, I think it was seen as being um, important to reduce patients' exposure to other patients in either primary care or um, hospitals. So you could see more patients remotely. Obviously for consultation specific for COVID to provide some of that decision support and remote support. Mm -hmm. For continuation of normal services, and I think we've probably seen uh, uh, a lot of change in that, but particularly priority services, to enable home working, and again, we've seen an increasing number of clinicians having to self-isolate because uh, potentially somebody in their in their home, in their family has shown symptoms, but they've been able, they've been clinically able um, to, to still do their work. So we've had examples of um, hospital clinicians and primary care clinicians being able to work uh, well from home and see patients, as I say, to support decision support and to provide resilience. Okay, move on. Next slide. So as I say, a month is a long time. So within the last four weeks, we took week, week zero as being the first week in March. We have seen significant scale up of the work that we had planned. So I think importantly, we had created the conditions for scale up, but we had not envisaged um, the requirement to scale up at the pace that we were now being asked to do. So over a period of four weeks, you can see a huge increase in the number of consultations from a baseline of 109 consultations being undertaken um, through the Near Me programme to uh, by, 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 by the end of last week, 4,600. Within primary care, um, we had a very, very small number of consultations taking place three weeks ago. Um, week four, we've seen that reach two and a half thousand. So this has been a huge um, scale up over a very short period of time. Um, and it's not without some of the risks, um, but I'm just going to touch on what made the difference and what made the difference to our ability to scale up in this way. Um, next slide, please. So what made the difference? Um, well, I think digital interventions and the Near Me programme are now seen as of critical importance by all. So from our cabinet secretary, our health minister, to our senior policy makers, um, to our chief executives within boards, I think there's been a real recognition that this disruption that's been caused both um, in the way we work and how we work um, may, may brings this into crit criticality. Um, and also a very clear mandate that this required to extend to all primary care services in Scotland and secondary care and we've we've identified a number of key priority um, clinical specialties within secondary care. Our plan that was agreed in February saw us doing this over a period of two to three years. Um, we're now having to do it in weeks. So again, it's that sort of rapid deployment and scale up. We were able to um, procure, we, we already had a license with Attend Anywhere, and we were doing work to, re to do a re-procurement exercise um, by the end of this year. However, we were able to invoke some emergency procurement uh, procedures and we procured um, the Attend Anywhere platform at significant increased capacity within three days. We also required to ensure that um, the GP practices and uh, the, the hospitals had the right equipment in place to be able to do this. Importantly, this also allows people to use their own devices. So if you don't have the right equipment in your GP practice, for example, you don't have a computer supported by a webcam, which may seem very basic, but not necessarily available in all practices, um, a GP or a health professional can use their own um, tablet, uh, iPad, phone uh, in order to do the consultation. Our ability to scale up rapidly was due to financial investment that we've been putting in over the previous years training and guidance that have been developed and again that was really accelerated um, uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, we were able to redirect staffing resource from wider primary care and secondary care improvement programs so I think something like 60 staff have been redirected from other uh, work to support the work within local boards and primary care um, areas. 
we've been doing some work on public awareness, but we've been slightly cautious that we didn't want to um, overdo that before the local services were ready. But there have been, uh, we've got a public facing website, we've got videos, um, and we will be doing some further public engagement around that. And I think the final point is accountability. So um, this week I'm doing calls with all the health boards in Scotland to inquire you know, about progress. We've got data coming out um, very regularly. Um, we're looking at uh, troubleshooting any issues that uh, people are experiencing on the ground. Um, and it's, it's just yeah, emergent issues every day are being addressed. Um, so it's a very agile, fast moving deployment uh, and scale up of a program that we were planning to scale up over the next two to three years. But the immediate um, challenges presented uh, by COVID has, I suppose, provided the conditions for rapid deployment. And we will be obviously looking at how we evaluate that and how it will sustain um, beyond the immediate crisis. So that's, uh, I think, all I was going to um, to say, but happy either now or at the end to take any questions or comments. Thank you for that, Margaret. Fascinating to hear. Fascinating to hear both in terms of rapid deployment, um, which is something we've all uh, mentioned in the past. You know, if things become successful, we, we, we need to rapidly deploy them and see a very practical example there. And interesting as well for other member states from, from the uh, European Union to hear about the use of uh, emergency procurement legislation, um, because that, that does, or procurement um, regulations, which really does help um, to change the, the, the picture in terms of procurement. So very, very interesting. Thanks for that again. I'm now going to um, move away from Scotland and, and go to Estonia, where we've got Trin. Um, is going to talk about uh, hacking the crisis. Um, and there's an article on, on, I think you've all got, got access to the article on the agenda, but there's an article as well um, from Forward Magazine. But uh, Trin, over to you, please, uh, in, in Estonia. Um, I have to jump in here. Um, if uh, if we'll have Trin, uh, so Trin has some audio problems right now. Okay. Uh, so Trin, if you're there can right now. Can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Oh my God, I got it back. <laughs> Wonderful. You're back in the I'm room. In, I'm back in the room. Let's hope that uh, it stays this way at least for the next 10 minutes. Okay, okay. Or but, seven. But, I can do seven as no, well. No, just, just please take your time. You, you, you're, um, we've, we've got more than enough time. So. Uh, no worries. Uh, so first of all, true. I'm going to share everybody with a link because I didn't prepare the slides. Uh, but this is uh, this is the only link that you need for now, and mm -hmm. and the story behind this link, um, and and even though the global hacks uh, logo is uh, very similar to the GoTo meetings one that I just noticed, uh, mm -hmm. is that uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, when Estonia declared the uh, the crisis situation and uh, the emergency situation uh, then uh, within 5 hours a group of people organized a hackathon to uh, sort of come up with good solutions uh, for the crisis and how to tackle the crisis and also to find good solutions of what to do uh, after the crisis and uh, within this one weekend uh, we had uh, approximately 1,000 participants in the hackathon and uh, 30 teams uh, competing for the best solutions. Some of the winning solutions that uh, our mentors and uh, judges picked were uh, platforms uh, to connect people at risk with volunteers via call center also a medical volunteer management database uh, where people with a medical background or medical training uh, could uh, sort of uh, join and and uh, come to help if necessary uh, in the overall country and also uh, a breeding apparatus uh, where uh, that the people who have the uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome or who developed that uh, due to the coronavirus could get some help and the website that you are seeing now is uh, sort of the next level of uh, that local hackathon that we had. 
So uh, inside Estonia, we did something uh, quite unique. Uh, I think uh, none of the hackathons before are organized within five hours. And uh, having that many participants joining us online was definitely a success for us. And uh, it developed even further. And basically the next day that we I believe we've lost a sound from Trin. Trin, if you can hear us, um, we've lost her sound, I'm afraid. I will just comment. Um, Gregor here. We were trying to establish proper sound uh, already uh, during the first 20 minutes, and we were on and off with uh, Trin. Uh, we didn't see this with other people. Nobody else was okay. complaining. I do apologize for this. Uh, we hope Trin can come back to us um, via a participant link, mm -hmm. which I will share with her now. I suggest we go to the next Move presenter. On. We can always come it's... back to, to Trin. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Helen, uh, I'd like to introduce Helen Northmore, who is uh, involved with uh, the um, our Welsh ecosystem. And Helen's uh, got a specific uh, uh, input today regarding both the innovation portal in Wales, but also uh, the GP online consultations as well. Thank Helen, you, Andy. Um, I have to apologise to everyone. I do have a cough. It's from a cold I had a couple of weeks ago and it won't go away. So apologies if I've coughed during this presentation. So I started this slide with how I usually end my presentations. Um, as a programme, we're there to support and connect people. So I always end with how can we help? And that was very much the attitude we took towards the COVID-19 crisis. Um, next slide, please. So just very briefly, uh, we're an organisation funded by the Welsh Government. We're a partnership between the Life Sciences Hub in Wales, which is tasked with accelerating innovation across life sciences and the NHS Wales Informatics Service, which provides a digital architecture and national services um, for IT for the NHS in Wales. And our focus is around bringing people together, as you would expect from an ecosystem. Um, but also we get um, involved in projects where we can specifically help and we do a lot of work developing um, or creating APIs in the developer portal. So essentially, we sit in between the NHS in Wales industry and academia. Next slide, please. So the message that came across very clearly, very quickly, was that industry wanted to help. So the hub uh, identified four key themes that um, that working with the NHS in Wales, they had identified as the urgent priorities. And this was about 10 days ago. And the four key areas were infection control, which included PPE, um, you know, sanitizer cleaning and so on. Medical devices, particularly around um, ventilators, but other technology that could help. Um, looking at projects around social isolation, uh, we have a large number of elderly population in Wales who are being asked to stay at home for up to three months. How can we make sure that they stay fit and well and uh, avoid needing to use health services? And then digital solutions, which isn't really a, a topic or a theme, but it's more about how can digital solutions support the activity that needs to happen. Um, so we held a call with industry using Zoom on uh, Wednesday last week and 198 people dialed into that call from different organisations across all four themes. Um, and there were some very specific relationships um, that were able to be created between the NHS and industry um, from those calls. And just around the digital solutions alone, I received 150 emails from that call until the end of that week which just shows the desire to do something to help. Um, and we received over 50 plus offers of support, again, just on digital solutions. But what we were seeing in particular was that uh, companies were emailing everybody they knew. So we had the Welsh Government receiving emails, the seven health boards, three health trusts, the NHS Wales Informatics Service and Public Health Wales. And so companies were really keen to help and 
um, and we're trying to knock on all the doors and there was a real lack of coordination and people just being bounced around the system. So um, <coughs> what we decided to do was set up an innovation portal. So the next slide, please. So at the moment, uh, you can go onto the Life Sciences Hub website, lshubwales.com. You can see the call for industry collaboration and that you can see here on the picture details about, for example, a bit more detail about what the theme around medical devices. And these have come from the NHS. We're working with um, shared services who handle procurement for the NHS in Wales to speed up those processes. However, it's very clear that um, these challenges are going to change. So although um, there's still some areas that are struggling with PPE equipment within Wales, the supply chain is kicking into gear. And so in a way, we believe that there's that that challenge is less urgent now because the things are, are being put in place. So we wanted to be a bit more dynamic around what these challenges that the NHS are going to face because they will change. So at this stage, it was medical devices and um, infection control. We now have a number of field hospitals being set up across Wales and so there is a whole range of procurement and uh, supply chain issues which include these but are also have added um, sort of uh, requirements and then in three weeks later challenges will change again. And also our process uh, requires the companies to email in. Uh, we haven't had a template with the kind of information we're looking for and so that's taking us quite a lot of time to process and, and sort of collect all the potential opportunities and offers from industry. So again, we felt we need to do something a bit more dynamic that makes the system a bit more coordinated, makes it easier for everybody to see what is what is needed and what is available. Next slide, please. So we procured a solution in four days. Um, there were a number of companies who had actually approached us around delivering an innovation portal and it's being launched on Friday. Um, and it's very much for us to push out challenges from the NHS to industry and that will be able to be accessed by anyone, but we can be really specific, agile um, and sort of reflect the changes of the needs of the NHS. And we will and we're putting in place a communications plan behind the launch because we need to let people know that this exists. And one of the things we had to make sure was that it, it would integrate with our existing ways of collecting information um, because we have uh, we don't want to be creating lots of bureaucracy. Um, and we have a team who are who are at the moment literally just administrating this because of the number of inquiries um, and the way that they're all coming in at the moment. So we actually want to make their lives a lot easier so they can focus on uh, actually looking at what we can do with these offers rather than just filling in spreadsheets. Next slide, please. So that's that's the sort of hub wide activity, but in particular, the digital health ecosystem has been working with technology enabled care, which is another national program funded by the Welsh Government. Um, and it's very appropriate that we follow on from Margaret's presentation because um, we've been uh, we've worked very closely with the tech program in Scotland. Or, or technology enabled care in Wales had because there was an existing national program not as far advanced as in Scotland been piloted particularly in child mental health services and again we had a plan slow rollout plan sort of 12 to 18 months um, and it and then about two weeks ago they were asked to roll it out in four to five weeks by the Welsh Government as uh, a key way of as Margaret completely outlined the benefits of online uh, video consulting services between GPs and patients is our first phase. And uh, I started, in, I was involved in the programme two weeks ago. And in that period, they have rolled it out to uh, nearly 100 GP practices across Wales. One entire health board has been covered. Um, the, uh, and with the support of uh, Attend Anywhere and, and Technology Enabled Care in Scotland, our own version, which we've been using, our own version of the platform goes live tomorrow and our website goes live later today. So going back to that question, how can we help? When we heard that Technology Enabled Care had been given that brief, um, our question was, how can we help? And so we redirected our comms and website resources to support their rollout because our activity was uh, external facing, working with stakeholders, running events, 
going to conferences cre and um, engaging with people. And actually, that's going to be more difficult over the next few months, but also not going to be a priority for a large part of our audience who are delivering frontline healthcare services. So we felt that this was the thing that we could do to support um, you know, the health service through COVID-19. And it's where we had some expertise because we had a social media and stakeholder engagement team and we already had a website up and running. They were already coming on to, to our website to share uh, because that was efficient, but actually we've accelerated that and put more resources in ourselves. So that was, that was sort of, uh, that we thought that would be quite a small project, but actually uh, it's not been announced, but that will be rolled out further than just to just GPs um, over the next few weeks. So there's going to be a rapid rollout across the whole of Wales uh, for the video consulting service. And we think that this will have a real impact in enabling uh, safe communications between patients and GPs. And um, Next slide, please. And then bearing in mind, we, we were assessing what our expertise and capabilities were. Our focus has been, uh, so we ran a, a specific website. It was initially for the Digital Health Ecosystem Wales. Um, as of this afternoon, it has uh, DHEW and technology enabled care on there. And later this week, we're going to start putting information from Public Health Wales on a mini site to support care homes because they have an urgent need to post information. Public Health Wales don't have the capacity to amend their website because they're one of the key organisations in the COVID-19 um, response. So this is, again, something where we've thought about what is our expertise and capacity and where can we help other people who have have the urgent jobs to do? So we're using it as a, as a resource or a host for urgent information and working with other health organisations in, within Wales to make sure it's linked into the right places. Uh, so we're not duplicating effort. Um, and so those people who have to put up information about COVID-19 can focus on that and we can put the supporting information that specific audiences would need. So that very briefly is what we're doing in Wales. Um, and so the final slide just has my contact details. So if you have any questions, uh, please do feel free to get in touch with me. But I'm staying on this call so we can we can uh, tackle those later. Thank you very much for that, Helen. Very, very encouraging to see, again, a rapid deployment, but also um, ensuring that these are linked to other ongoing government-led approaches as well. So thank you for that. Um, we're now going to move uh, from, from Wales uh, to Germany. Uh, we have uh, Dieter, Dieter Zocho on the line. Um, and Dieter's going to uh, talk about uh, procurement, uh, specifically um, during the times of, of COVID-19. Uh, as many of you have heard so far, we've seen different approaches which have, have, have demanded rapid changes to the way in which we procure. Um, so over to you, to you, Dieter, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me in this webinar. Yeah, I'm talking about procurement in Europe. Yeah. Yet, to be honest, the procurement is one of the darkest chapters in the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah? Materials that in normal times are sufficiently available and only a few cents cost decide today on life and death. Yeah? So please go to the next slide. Yeah? I, I, have divided, I have divided this subject matter into three main dimensions. Let me start with uh, yeah, <laughs> also the darkest chapter, the political chapter. Yeah? When this writing starts uh, about you know mid of Feb, end of February, uh, Germany and France, as Germany and France are still had some domestic production facilities, an immediate export ban, yeah, an export ban also within the EU, yeah, on medical goods was imposed at the beginning of March. Yeah? And the very, very sad, sad message was France and Germany first. Yeah? And, and not the country first, and that the need is the greatest. And as you know, uh, in this, this crisis starts in, starts in, in northern of Italy. Yeah? 
we are very very sad yeah the the much yeah going back to the political <laughs> message, the much invoked community of values and the, and the eu connection is suffered serious damage yeah and under the pressure of the med industry this best this bed was relaxed again from 15th of march yeah what happens yeah the policy uh, the politi politicians suddenly realized that the export stock of the young country is the import stock of the other country that means since the german friend, since the german manufacturers need spare parts from abroad to pr to produce their own med devices yeah, the borders would have to be open again and this is an example how you see how confusing uh, is this politic acting in times like this yeah no clue no coordinations only only uh yeah uncoordinated thing an uncoordinated thing yeah and meanwhile china meanwhile china implements great power politics by generously sending relief supplies to europe with the politicals the message from china is we are the superior system yeah and especially if you if you remember the the the, the reports on the on the movie on, on the tv yeah every every delivery every aircraft from coming from china uh, was accompanied by a huge pr pr campaign yeah? uh, and that's what are the chinese are saying to us we are for my for my point of view we are the superior system okay that, that's the political dimension uh, let's move to the what what's going on in the hospitals yeah yeah, to be honest, um, uh, on, on the hospitals, on site in the hospitals, there's a war with the suppliers. Yeah? Uh, of course, the material is available, the goods are available, are, are available, but the price the, the, but the prices are rising by several one thousand percent. Only one example: an FFP2 mask. An FFP2 mask is uh, a mask who protects the virus. Uh, 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 very good. Uh, in, in, in normal times, uh, 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 the cost of a mask is about 30 euro cents. Yeah? Uh, uh, or in, in times like this, you had to pay up to 15 cents, 15 euros, sometimes 20 euros. And imagine the, the durability of a mask, of a mask is uh, 120 to 180 minutes. Yeah? So you can, so you can, so you, so you can calculate a doctor needs in in one in one working day i don't know three or four masks yeah and you can imagine the huge cost impact yeah a, a hospital a small hospital with 100 or 500 100 200 beds uh, uh, yeah has cost increases of i don't know thousands of euros a day yeah the original the originally did decentralized procurement responsibility at the hospital uh, originally the the procurement is decentralized uh, in the hospital. But in times like this, uh, in addition, the procurement uh, as a state comes to a, as a state task. Yeah? Supplier, and I have a lot of contact with, or with manufacturers or, or company entrepreneurs. They, they reported to me state president, chancellors, and kings who calls the, who calls suppliers directly and ask for medical for medical goods yeah in israel the secret service Mossad has procured corona test materials yeah and donald trump another story was in our medias uh donald trump wants to buy a german company that makes corona vaccines yeah you know you see how how crazy this procurement organization is changing yeah nobody knows what who is doing anymore? Nobody has an overview of the number of materials needed. Nobody knows what they actually need. And then, what I see in the, in the hospital, there's the law of jungle. The stronger, richer country, one will survive. Yeah, yeah that was the, the situation in the hospital. Let's move to the last part, the, the changing from my point of view. Procurement of critical medical supplies will be in the European uh, uh, political dimension. 
to be honest, and I had a lot of contact also with politicians, it is raised to the rank of defense policy. Yeah. The production, of course, will certainly not to return to Europe for cost reasons. Nobody, no, nobody can, the cost to produce this stuff here in Europe is, is, is too high. Yeah. These are, in normal times, very, very simple, simple materials, simple, simple stuff. Yeah. You can't produce it here. Nobody can pay this. Yeah. But however, European strategies for stockpiling and rapid ramp up for the own production elaborated. That, that's my, that, that's what I'm expecting, not to bring back to, pr to pr the production to, to Europe, but we will, we will uh, rethink how we can make stockpiling in Europe for, for, a, for a certain time period, or how we can ramp up uh, the production uh, in a crisis like this. Yeah, that's it more or less. Uh, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you for that detail and an interesting interesting angle in terms of procurement, both uh, with both the political and the hospital setting there. Yeah. Um, and then an interesting um, presentation and, 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 and a one for us to think on as as We've all seen national efforts to uh, procure slightly differently and quicker, but also to develop our own internal um, both procurement mechanisms, but also development of new products as well um, in rapid uh, rapid time succession. I think you'll you'll all agree this has been obviously our first first attempt. We've 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 seen across Europe. From just a, a brief number of our ecosystems good examples of rapid deployment um, from from both scotland and wales we've seen really interesting examples from both estonia and from slovenia as well which have given us uh, albeit slightly cut off but given us good practice in terms of um, hacking um, uh, in estonia but also uh, the um, ventilator uh, program that we've seen coming out from Ljubljana and from, from, from Slovenia, as well as uh, from the beginning from Joseph in Spain in terms of online uh, artificial intelligence based testing. What we'd like to do now, um, we've, we, we, we we're conscious we've got a, a number of people online and, and Gregor will help hopefully facilitate this, is open the floor. But before we do, um, we uh, of, of the idea here behind this was to start the process uh, with our ecosystems to look at what the current pictures are what 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 regions and countries are both struggling with and and put into practice to survive but also to hear about some of the best practice practices so we'd like to hear perhaps from you uh, if you've got any questions for any of the presenters and the panel members today but also, uh, if you've got ideas which we can perhaps use in subsequent pop-up ecosystems, because as, as we said right at the beginning, we'd like to repeat these. So, Gregor, I don't know if you can uh, open up the floor for participants to either raise their hand, I think is, is, is the uh, mechanism with uh, GoToWebinars, um, or whether people can type their questions to you. Yes, I've opened the floor. Uh, the person I think still needs to unmute um, so Gisela will will have the first uh, word there because I see her hand but I will still uh, read out what Trin uh, wrote to me uh, we tried uh, like five different things to uh, put her into the call but I think it's it's fair to her that that I read this out mm -hmm. uh, so um, I don't know if I was hurt, uh, but we are looking at over a thousand mentors for the global hackathon that takes place between 9th and 12th of April. Uh, you saw the site. The site is theglobalhack.com. Uh, people who are interested to join as mentors or supporters can write to Trin. This is T-R-I-I-N at technopol.ee. So let me not respell this, just send a mail either to Andy or myself. Mm -hmm. Another message before going to questions. <clears throat> uh, 
um, and comments is uh, Brian's. Uh, Brian O'Connor, our president, said one of our members who has a factory. Oh, if Brian is here, perhaps Brian can tell it directly. No, he's not. I don't see him now. So one of our members who has a factory in China has supplied ventilators and PPE, so the masks, to a number of our members in Europe over the past few weeks. Of course, stocks are now low, but further production is underway. So please contact Andy to be contacted, uh, to, to, do, to be contact, connected with this member. If you feel you're the right person in your ecosystem to even go for such supplies, please do so. We want to be as action-oriented as possible. Um, there was also, uh, Joseph uh, said uh, that perhaps he would like to share something more. Uh, there were some people who were uh, also told uh, that they will not present in the first one, that they will come in the next week. I'm sure there are uh, either questions or needs or solutions that you would like to discuss. Um, the easiest way for me to manage it, manage it is uh, I see the whole list of everybody participating. So there is uh, something like a hand button on your user interface. If I see that, then I will uh, give you the word. If you wish to start uh, speaking, uh, I would also let you do that. So can you speak at this moment? Um, just for to try this out, Gisela, can you please just uh, raise your voice? Hi, <laughs> but okay. I didn't raise so my we hand. Can, we, can, we can include you as well. So uh, Gisela, do you have some question or something to add? I know that you, you said it was a mistake. I see it here in the, in the questions yeah. pane. Uh, but uh, do you have something to add now to, to what you heard? Well, since, since I'm on now to the community, I would be interested later to get the contact from the Chinese supplier because we already had bought ventilators from okay. China supplier and uh, okay. the factory was in, intervened by the government. So there's been a control over certain countries, especially Asia, Singapore, where I have contacts as well, where the own governments are controlling what is being sent to Europe, at least to Spain. So just to okay. consider that. Okay. Somebody else. If it helped, just just on that point, please contact me directly. Um, what we've seen um, is a picture that, as you can imagine, is changing, and is very much related to what Dita was talking about, um, whereby we are aware that the price of some of these equipment was changing, um, not day by day, uh, but sometimes hour by hour. Um, so. We also need to be very, very mindful um, to ensure continuity of supplies, but also uh, ensure that we are um, using proper means where possible uh, to ensure value for money as well for and and and, and uh, continuity of supplies will we'll follow on from that. So yeah, please please come contact me, and we'll put you in contact with the other member. Uh, one remark from my side. Uh, okay. about, uh, about the uh, production situation. I, I have the strong feeling uh, that, that the prices for the, for the medical goods for FFP masks and so on will drop significantly by May, June. Please be careful what you are buying, what you are paying. Yeah? Many suppliers from China offer me this stuff, not for me, I'm a consultant, but they offer for my hospital clients, delivery until end of April. This means that China is currently ramping up its productions. Yeah? And it could be that the pricing in about six or eight, seven weeks are strongly, are strongly declining. Uh, be careful what you are paying now. Yeah? To be honest, it, it, it depends a little bit what the, what the, the Americans are doing. Yeah? But I have the strong feeling a lot of especially for for medical consumables they are ramping up their productions and so please be careful about the prices okay trin is you know, back with us so uh, thank you thank you for this warning trin uh, would you like to speak you are unmuted you have to unmute yourself okay yeah yeah trin yeah Yes. So we, if we are not getting Trin in, we have a question uh, coming in from Dave Neha. 
please could uh, uh -huh. please could each of in the in the intervention say who they are yes thank you for this uh, recommendation susan who are you and give us your question susan feitoza where do you come from susan can you speak with us um, oh i'm unmuted sure we're the new please present um, yourself yeah exactly yeah thank you susan do you hear do you hear me okay yeah can you hear me can, uh, okay yes um, yeah, Susan Feitoza from the new um, ecosystem from uh, Melbourne in Australia. So um, it's more of a comment, but in terms of grouping the the next ecosystems together, what was incredibly interesting for me, um, we are definitely a number of weeks behind um, what some of our European counterparts um, and the challenges and where each each ecosystem is responding is extremely helpful. So as you put the next groupings together, I actually think that that's incredibly useful um, to kind of people who are weeks and weeks and, and, and more maybe two months into it and where there are ecosystems where we're literally at the first needs and our needs will change in probably a few weeks. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Trin, uh, can we speak to you now? I'm testing, testing, one, two, three. It works. It works, wonderful. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that uh, none of you heard me before rather than just uh, saying hello. So um, I'm not sure how we much We you... heard, we, we did hear about uh, three or four minutes of what you were talking about. The key okay. is that in the meantime, I don't know whether you heard me read out your mail and your mail in your mail you said that you will be having a huge global hackathon i think it's very important that we don't just see you know what each of every one of us in our ecosystems can do and there is amazing uh, activity going on it's important to see how he, we can cross borders so the the fact that you have built this infrastructure really quickly and that you will enable the hackathon might be uh, of very, very very big use to our ecosystems as well I personally would invite people also to, to participate in some way in your hackathon. So please continue with your message. We, we still owe you a few minutes. I think um, the platform that we're using um, did play a little bit of tricks on the audio with Trin today. I apologize. No, no, I also apologize. I think it's 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 always the matter of uh, connecting. And, and even though I've been spending the whole morning in Skype and Zoom and Microsoft Teams meetings, then uh, sometimes life just plays tricks on you. But uh, all in all, we are organizing the global hack and we expect 100,000 people participating. And this means that uh, in order to sort of make sure that these uh, people actually get to the actual products or services that uh, you usually develop during a hackathon, we need loads of different mentors. And this uh, means that we need over a thousand mentors who could help the teams over the weekend. Uh, you can currently see uh, on the screen the tracks that we have planned for the hackathon. They really vary from arts and creativity to uh, different health topics. And I think that this network could definitely help us to uh, uh, to uh, to sort of bring together the expertise, especially in the health field. And uh, it would be wonderful if you could uh, join uh, the hackathon as mentors. And this is uh, also my uh, task in this hackathon. I'm uh, gathering these uh, thousand plus mentors within the next five days. So it's definitely going to be a wild ride for me as well. Uh, but what we try to achieve uh, within uh, this weekend um, or next weekend actually is that uh, we want to see as many solutions as possible and uh, the, emphasize, the emphasis is on the quality because uh, we see that nowadays we have uh, in every country these pop-up solutions, either it's home deliveries, either it's some simple uh, simple solutions for uh, tackling the crisis. But I also urge everybody to think what happens after uh, we get out of this uh, situation, if we get out of our homes again, what will happen then? What do we see in the world? Uh, what has changed? 
uh, what do we need uh, for the new solutions? And uh, since we are all testing out these interconnected uh, calls and platforms, then I think that this is a really good uh, solution for us uh, now to, to really bring together the ideas and make them happen. And we have already proven, uh, and not only in Estonia, but in many different countries, that 48 hours is definitely enough to come up with good solutions. So why not do it uh, all at once and in one weekend? Uh, thank you very much. Very, very inspiring. Um, I'm sure there will be people even from yes. this webinar joining. Um, I will definitely um, mm. be a participant in some sort. Yeah. Uh, do we like have to start in, other... uh, please, just, please, Gregor. One of the things I'd like specifically on that, Trin, is if you could email me directly today um, with details on that specific ask for mentors for your global hack. We can ensure yeah. that goes out to our members. Um, we, we are publishing these on a weekly basis. And I want to make sure we don't publish this too late to, for people to become mentors and be involved. So mm -hmm. the sooner you can get that information to me directly today, I glue it in an email, rough as you want it to be, um, and then email at andy at echalliance.com. I will ensure that goes out to our um, both our network of, of members, but also to our wider community as well, because it's vital, as with all of these really excellent ideas um, and solutions and requests we've seen, that we are sharing these as widely as possible. That would be wonderful, and of course, actually, right after this call, I will have uh, I will have a talk with our sort of main mentor or our leading mm -hmm. mentor, who will mm -hmm. also help me gathering the mentors, and mm. uh, I will I will send the the call to action out uh, tonight, uh, as as I, we try to reach out to as many people as possible who really Excellent. can be the experts here. And I have Gregor's email, and I have your email, so I yeah. I will share it tonight. Excellent. Thank you for that. Gregor. Thank you very much. Um, do we have some other questions? Uh, you can also just either start talking. Uh, everybody's unmuted. You have to unmute yourself first. Or you can raise a hand and then I ask you to start as you wish. Okay, Gumindo. Uh, please, uh, you gave the question. Should I read it? Will you just, you know, start talking and present yourself first? Where, who we are, where you're coming from? Yeah, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, this is from the coast of Sri Lanka. I'm just to need to whether do you have any journal or any other uh, academic uh, publication, uh, you know, another journal which we can publish any related uh, academic activity so others in the rest of the world can, you know, have a look at it and we, we can also look at it quickly and to share this knowledge on these COVID interventions. Thank you. I can uh, answer that. What I suggest you do is, as, as one of our newest ecosystems in Sri Lanka, we would welcome that request to go out to our members because obviously uh, a lot of a lot of countries are further on the uh, further on in terms of their progress with this. I can help share learning already, um, and you'll see a number of portals have been online. So please, uh, again contact me and we can put that out as a very specific request regarding the research side, yeah? Right, okay, thank you. Um, I can just Hi. comment that, um, I can just quickly comment this and uh, please then the next uh, the next question comes. Uh, I have been involved with a group working here in Slovenia uh, that has uh, uh, one of the many solutions I believe now. Uh, it's a solution to treat the acute respiratory distress syndrome and we have uh, used already in the in the preparation of the project that we're doing articles uh, in the scientific papers and we saw general scientific papers uh, addressing the situation we actually saw articles about how they use the same uh, substance in in china so i think uh, many scientific articles are being shared if somebody would like to expose or suggest uh, now or later a specific publication that is academic that is of use for for this kind of purpose please just let us let us be aware of it and we'll share it with Gumindo as well who who was trying to ask a question 
Hi, this is Neha Dave. I was trying to ask a question. Uh, please uh, present yourself uh, and, and then ask the question. So my name is Neha Dave. I'm an independent consultant based in Brussels and I work on healthcare issues. And the question that I have um, for the uh, speakers, and thank you so much for your presentations and your um, interventions, is that um, the recent unfolding of the coronavirus crisis and the discussions around COVID-19, um, sometimes there is, what I notice is there is a gap of the patient voice in discussions. And for example, um, there is still a question to be addressed such as patient data collection, the quality of the information, um, whether or not it's actually the same data or information that's collected from each country or each region, the consistency behind that, and um, the feedback collected from patients in real time. Um, so not, you know, because I today another webinar, I just want to mention this, not, not in this one necessarily. Somebody said, oh, well, after we've put out the fire, we can look at what's happened with some of the, you know, on a certain issue. I just thought, well, actually the, the key advantage of having digital health today and so many systems already established or uh, coming on board is that we have real time information already um, coming towards us. So how would, um, I don't know exactly who would be on your panel, but it'd be interesting to know, I think the lady from um, the DHEW Innovation Portal in Wales and maybe some others um, have uh, feedback on how patient information in real time is collected and how patient voices are integrated into the model and not months afterwards. Thank you. Gregor, do you want me to kick off? Uh, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> so that's a very big question that you've you just asked. Can you present yourself first? Can you present oh, sorry. yourself? Yes, I'm Helen Northmore from Wales. Um, so yes, you asked a, a very big question, um, and I think it's in two parts. One, uh, I think that in terms of patient data, uh, the approach within Wales is to use existing systems and processes, um, which are going through a digitization program as it is, so it's not creating new systems, it's, it's using the existing ones so that uh, data can be shared. Um, we don't have uh, a single data warehouse with real time data for the whole of Wales yet, that's, uh, that's in the programme, um, so it's using existing NHS systems. But in terms of the patient voice, um, I think that is a really good challenge because there is that feeling of uh, emergency and urgency, and we just need to get things done. Um, and, you know, I, I think that that's a challenge that we need to keep in mind um, as, as we go through this process. And, you know, that's something I'll take back to the people I'm working with um, in Wales. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Very much. Yep. Any other questions or input? Um, I, would, um, I, would, I would still put one, one point out, which is um, currently we're talking about um, your experience, your uh, solutions. Um, perhaps the point of, you know, uh, of, of using this network also in terms of the needs. Um, so, um, we are offering different solutions. We did this, somebody else did that. Um, there might be some needs uh, there. Uh, a need I have personally, um, it, it really comes from you know my thinking in the last um, weeks, I would say. So the last two weeks, in my experience, have seen um, a duplication or even more triplication of, of, of the demands and the speed with which uh, the work needs to be done. And um, I'm happy to do it. I'm really happy to see how people respond. Uh, my need, what is my need? My need, I, I, I keep asking myself, is this enough? Are we doing enough? Um, are we bringing together uh, things in the also right strategic way? Because currently we are really uh, like the goalie, um, just fending off the, the, the shots that are coming in from the field and just protecting our, our goal. It's just a metaphor. But um, the real question here is this. I have several friends who don't work in uh, healthcare. 
uh, either they are uh, at the same level of occupancy as before or they are bored um, and I would like to uh, ask them to volunteer um, and help and I'm doing this with some people um, also companies are stepping ahead at least in my country I see companies stepping ahead offering support um, many times it's uh, the real challenge is, is how to basically organize everything, how to bring it together in the right way. Of course, it's going step by step. We're doing all of that, but still, you know, this question of, you know, how do we uh, help properly? How do we uh, put together the uh, unmet capacity in some people? Because some people would like to help, but they are just need to be reminded or motivated. So a little bit of my thinking on, on that point of uh, in spite of the real real big amount of work right now I think the respons re responsibility uh, stays so I don't know perhaps somebody can share um, their thinking on this topic and um, then 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 we will close and, and come back in a week's time we think there is enough uh, interest and, and reason to to repeat the webinar as we said at the same time um, and the same same place perhaps um, we can try also another another platform we'll see about it i apologize for the notifications that were popping in and, and other stuff so somebody else would like to join this uh, thinking or discussion in the absence of any other questions from from colleagues here i'd like to echo what gregor said we've started hopefully something today in terms of hearing from our ecosystems our ecosystems are primarily around leading with a need and that's what we want to move from um, as we change and adapt the level of collaboration across our ecosystems in these unprecedented times we very much would like to use the coming weeks to hear that the need uh, as well as your best practice from your ecosystems. So we will be in contact with our ecosystem coordinators and our members to help grow and develop that platform. Obviously, today was a, a first step for us with a new platform and we've got elements we can review and, 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 and adapt to. We're all in a process of unprecedented adaption, uh, as, as, as you're all aware. But I think the value of today is already we're seeing the value of sharing information not from distant necessarily from countries as distant as sri lanka and wales but even within the uk uh, i know that there are uh, really positive um, messages happening off offline from this conversation regarding sharing best practice in terms of procurement and needs across uh, the european union we've also and we will be sharing again um, got information of portals that are being set up as well as in wales but through eit health etc and other european programs to share both need and solutions and we will endeavor to share those as much and as rapidly as we can this is a changing target and i believe this time next week we will be seeing different input from different ecosystems hopefully today with our pop-up ecosystem you've seen the value of, of, of the, the the sharing that we've done so far but also the potential for collaboration to continue the benefit of an international network of ecosystems has always been that extra value of a multiple input from stakeholders from different countries hopefully we can repeat this in the coming weeks and I'd like to personally thank all of our speakers today. I think we've seen some uh, fantastic input already in a short time. In terms of rapid, ra uh, rapid deployment, this wasn't happening a week ago. Um, we have got to this stage within a small amount of time, hopefully within the next seven days. We will be having this at the same time, the same, uh, same date next week and in the following weeks as we continue to grow and evolve our platform and our level of collaboration. I will just uh, add two more things that because uh, more questions are coming in right now. So I, I will not uh, not yet. Uh, I would not yet end this, uh, Andy. 
Um, so, uh, first question from Susan uh, from Melbourne. I think, Susan, you're based in Barcelona, right? Um, have we included patient groups in Slovenia? Uh, my answer was in part yes, uh, but I need to tell more. Um, uh, one important thing of, of the principle of ECH Alliance, with, which I really personally like in particular, is the inclusion of all stakeholders. This means that if you have an ecosystem in which you are just companies, you're not a really well-balanced ecosystem. If you're just academia, you're not really well-balanced. But if you're, if you're not in, involving patients in direct discussion in your work, then, then, then you, you are missing a really big part. We do that here in Slovenia. I can't say that uh, patients were front and center in all of the media, et cetera, in all of these discussions. But even on today's call, I see my friend from Alzheimer, Slovenia, uh, David, uh, joined us. And, and there is there is serious, serious discussion always going on, not just today in the COVID crisis. It has to be open to patients. So most needs probably will come from there. And they are usually very often least technology savvy. That's one comment. The other one is uh, a really uh, important idea here is uh, a good approach. But Gisela, will you will you tell it? Okay, uh, I will. I will. Uh, yeah, please, please. Yeah, do. I'm, I'm just. Gisela from Galician Health Cluster. No, I was just mentioning that it would be nice because uh, I think many of our regions have this quick marketplace where we put the need, especially of PPEs and other things, and uh, and they also put the offers. So needs and offers too much in a fast way. We have the makers, but we also have all the digital solutions, platforms, etc. And I guess between ECH lines that would be really, uh, really practical because it's easier than to us from really far away places. Although China, I know you have members there, but nevertheless, um, within Europe seems to be a bit more open and flexible, the borders. So, and within our network, it would be nice to potentiate that. Okay. Uh, one more thing that I would like to, uh, uh, to offer, um, all coordinators in the ECH Alliance are invited and many of them already responded to be in a WhatsApp group of all the coordinators. Um, this means that there is a, a direct, let's call it chatting channel, you know, to put in needs. So that the agreement there with everybody is not to be a group about, you know, spamming, etc. One really important aspect of this is that we have been uh, posting member-to-member uh, -member offers. Andy mentioned this. Uh, today is the third newsletter, third week in a row, that we are sending offers by our members uh, that m in many cases, I'm not saying all, but in many cases are free to use because there are solutions that people think in our member members that, that they could help. Uh, it's true, those are offers. Um, those are not directly needs. Uh, we need to record the needs somewhere. So uh, a really quick way of how to do a marketplace, um, how to proceed, uh, I, I will welcome it and I will support it internally. I'm sure uh, there, are, there are ways to do it really fast. I don't know, Google Sheets, uh, different, different types of approaches. Uh, perhaps the most uh, equipped in this is uh, Trin, but Trin is super busy with the, the global hack. Mm -hmm. But still we need to share this, you know, quick ways of, of, of sharing. Like um, I'm sure uh, there will be many interesting uh, things to hear from our Serbian colleagues next week, um, uh, because uh, a, a part of why to do this was really initiated a week ago in a discussion that that we had with them. So I'm, I'm, I was not happy personally about uh, not 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 properly engaging them into this one, forgetting something, and so my apology to Ivana if, if you are here still on the on the call. Ivan is here on the call, yes, she is. Um, okay. Okay, Gisela, also you're posting uh, your marketplace, I guess. So, fine. We'll, yeah, we'll, and, we'll and, distribute and, this. Yeah, and uh, we can distribute this, and, um, and you'll see, hopefully, in our member-to-member uh, -member, uh, emails as well, we are now starting to get through some more uh, requests for support and requests for information. So. That's a, a, a moving target. I think um, we're seeing week after week um, the situation is changing for ourselves. And um, I'm just pleased to be able to say we can look forward to next week to uh, share some more as well.
Okay. Andy, so I think we shall close unless somebody mm -hmm. else would like to speak. It's been an hour and a half. Um, I'm sure you're running to many other things uh, mm. at this very moment. Um, so uh, on behalf of ECH Alliance, thank you. Myself also. Andy, mm. would you like to close this? Yes. Thank you very much, all of you, for, for both uh, participating and sharing, uh, both to our panel members. It's been very, very interesting to see uh, such a diverse, um, but also similar um, level of response as well. And I think that's the reassuring thing here that um, we're seeing similarities uh, across countries. But what's encouraging, and, and I don't know about yourselves, is, is we've managed in a short space of time to pull together um, input from uh, both Wales, Scotland, Slovenia, Estonia, Spain, Germany, Sri Lanka, Melbourne, etc. Our ecosystem can help bring these people together um, and our international network will hopefully build this as an opportunity for all of our ecosystems to take part in the future. Thanks, Gregor, for sorting this out and we'll speak to you all next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. attending. Thank you. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.